And thank you guys so much for tuning in and talking a wealth today. I have Max Ann Gooding here, the mother of Jasan Patton, who was unfortunately um, gunned down November of 2017. Mm -hmm. um, but I wanted to bring you on here today. I've had, in this season, I've had two people come on, Danielle Shaw Oglesby, whose daughter was killed in March of this year, and um, Shonda McCullough, whose daughter was killed um, actually November of last year as well, which is crazy. a week apart. Your kids will kill a week apart. So I really wanted to bring um, some enlightenment to the story behind it um, and the story after because there's definitely a story. These are not just shirts. These are not just names. These are people that had real lives, real parents, real love, and they're not here. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of times people tend to forget because they're no longer here. So I love to be able to keep their um, names alive as much as I can. So first thing, how are you doing today? How are you doing? Um, I'm good, I'm pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I wanted to jump in, before we even jump in about Jasan, cause he did a lot, um, and before we unfortunately have to tap into that story, can you share a little bit about yourself? I mean, you also had things going on, you had a ministry and all of those things going on before this took place. Mm -hmm. Can you share a little bit of what you, um, who you are and what you do? Yes. Yeah. so, um, I started uh, my own uh, mentoring program called mm -hmm. Women of Valor, um, and it's a mentoring program for young women between the ages of 12 and 18. Mm -hmm. I actually had started that in August of 2017. Oh, wow. Um, okay. And how that came about was um, things that I've been through as a young child. Um, I wanted to help heal mm -hmm. young women, um, give them a voice, give them a platform as well as mm -hmm. share my story so that they could see, like, doesn't matter where you're from, what you've been through, um, you can make it and you mm -hmm. can make a difference. Mm -hmm. So I started that, like I said, in August of 2017. Um, and it was going really good, mm -hmm. um, and it, it 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 showed a lot of, about resiliency. And of course, it was it, it's called Woman of Valor because mm -hmm. I am a woman of strength, mm -hmm. and I wanted them to represent and know that you know they're the same. That's yeah. a good word, resiliency. I'm gonna come back to that um, in a moment mm -hmm. with Jasan. Um, but you have three beautiful children. Let's. I want to make sure I mention them before we move into Jasan because you have a daughter and you have an older son. Yes. So. As a mom, there's always one thing about our kids. Well, not just one thing. There's always something about our kids individually that we love. Like, we love all our kids, but there's something about, so share a little nugget that, about all of your kids that you just, like, <laughs> really, really love, even just sign, even though, even in this yeah. absence here. Yeah, well, my oldest is Nadim. Mm -hmm. Um He actually just turned 24 in September. Okay. Uh, he's a college student. He goes to a Millersville University. Okay. Um, he graduated with his associates from Valley Forge Military um, Academy College. Um, and Nadim, um, very mature, um, very on point. He's actually started studying engineering architecture. Okay, okay. Um, then there was Jasan, um, who, very smart. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, he was taken away from me at 18. Mm -hmm. um, he was in his senior year um, and was graduating. Um, mm -hmm. Very fun, um, fun loving, very serious, very mature as well, mm -hmm. and loved football, loved football. That was his world. And then there's my little princess Amaya, who just turned nine in September as well. Um, and she's very mature. She's been here before, very <laughs> understanding. <laughs> and she, she loves to dance. She loves to dance. Yeah. That's her thing. Yeah. I remember when I first met you, that's what the Lord showed me before you told me that. Yeah. She's, I saw her dancing in the spirit. So she's definitely yeah. um, anointed there. Mm -hmm. So just sign, um, you know, football star, music star, mm -hmm. friend, mm -hmm. um, the mm -hmm. middle child. So I'm sure the one that always big, you know, they do all the stuff <laughs> to get the attention. But he was definitely a star in his own right, but he's very smart. He was accepted to Kutztown in East Stroudsburg before. Um, Penn State as well. Wow. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. all three. Um, so how proud were you? How proud of you? Well, even still, how proud are you of him and all of his accomplishments that he made like at 18? Some people don't even ever accomplish that ever in life. So to be able to accomplish that so quickly, that is a testament of who he was. So how proud are you of his accomplishments? <sighs> When I tell you that was the one I stayed the hardest on. Okay. Because my oldest, I'm like, I knew he had it. Uh -huh. um, just son, I'd be like, you know, I will always stay on him. And he would always be like, Mom, I got this. And I'd be like, okay, you better have it. And um, mm -hmm. I didn't realize how much he had it until he passed. Because I always thought, like, he would do stupid mm -hmm. stuff. And I'd be like, just son, you're 18. Stop, you know. Mm -hmm. But he, he, um, had it. he had it. Wow. He had it so much more than I, I would have known. He was... Um, being a leader mm -hmm. to his friends. Mm -hmm. He was, um, everyone said he was the maturest out of the brunt bunch. Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't see it at home because to me he was like a two year old. <laughs> but you know, that's yeah, what they do. Yeah, always a baby. Yeah. yeah. But um, he was the most mature. And um, 
he just he he was changing lives and um mm. I like I said I didn't realize that until after his passing. <coughs> right. Um and I didn't know the the difference that he had made in his school and mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. like so many people that I didn't even know they would just come up to me or inbox me and tell me and I was just like wow like how he encouraged them. I remember one specific story that someone had inboxed me um and they were like um you don't know me. They mm -hmm. were like but I wrestle and um, I remember when I lost the state championship, but I wanted to quit and give up. And he was like, and Ja was like, you know, encouraging me. And he was Aww. like, Ja told him winners don't quit. And that just, that stayed in my mind. Mm. So when everything happened with Ja and I got to the point where I wanted to do that, I kept hearing mm -hmm. winners don't quit. And it, it just kept me going. But I was just like, wow. And he was like, I'm going to, so many of his friends was like, I'm going to keep pushing for him. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that just was like. I loved it. It just made and he looks like just it. like you. I'm looking at you. He looks just <laughs> like you. Like, it's insane. He looks just like you. But unfortunately, you know, like you said, he changed a lot of lives. But your life was changed as well in November. So before we jump into, I mean, we can't jump into so far of what happened because right. there's some circumstances around it. But take us back to that day. Like, what was that day like for you? Was it just a normal day? Okay. So, um, hmm. It's so surreal when I think about it because um, it's just like, you, you still can't believe it, like it really happened. Mm -hmm. um, so I remember waking up Saturday morning around two something mm -hmm. and I tossed and turned, I'm like, why am I up? Like wide awake and I, I didn't know why. So I'm just on Facebook commenting and I'm like, why am I up? I didn't go to bed till probably like about four something that morning, mm -hmm. Saturday morning. Um, I woke up around eight because I, I had praise dance practice mm -hmm. um, that morning. I'm getting dressed, you know, nothing out, in the, out of the ordinary. Um, my phone rings mm -hmm. about 830 and it's his father calling me and he's like, we have to get to Harrisburg. My son's been shot. And I was just like, and I literally can hear still exactly how everything was said mm. you know it's like i hear the everything so clearly to this day and i just was like what you know what are you talking about and he said it again and my mind still wasn't it didn't resonate you know and i'm like mm. where's my son you know where's my son and i was like okay where does she live what's her address you know his sister on his dad's side and he didn't know all of that um, so I just immediately went into like mommy mode, like I'm going to find my child. I don't know what you're talking about, but I'm going to find my son. Mm. Um, so I hung up from him at that point and I just started Googling shootings, shootings in Harrisburg. And there wow. were a lot of shootings. And in that's Harrisburg. how you found where she lived? That's how I found my son. Mm -hmm. That's how I found my son. So in that ride, before we take a break, I mean, actually going Well, you up didn't even go to Harrisburg. Oh, we never had to go to there. Harrisburg. Wow. Um, I don't know if you want me to continue, but um, you we, you can go as far or as little because I know there's some circumstances and right. I know so whatever you can share, you can share whatever you can. It's okay. okay. So um, we never made it to Harrisburg. Um, after our Google shootings, there was um, one shooting where there was a um, number, and I didn't know if this was my son or not. I just was like, I'm going to call it, and I called mm -hmm. and I just said. Listen, my name is such and such. I'm from Philadelphia. My son is in Harrisburg. His dad just called me and said he's been shot. I don't know where he is. I need help. Can you please help me? So the person, um, the answer was like, this is not your son. Um, but he was like, I'll try to help you and took my information down and was just like, I'll have someone call you within an hour or two, you know, to, to help you. So meanwhile, I'm just pacing and I'm still, I'm sure. yeah, like yeah. not, this is not happening. And, um, so probably like about an hour or two later, I get a call from a coroner um, and uh, he, he, he says, um, you know, ma'am, I think we, it's a possibility that we have your son here. Mm. So I'm just like, okay, you know, he's like, can you do, you know, my son had two ta ta tattoos. Okay. So he's like, can you describe a tattoo? Um, at that moment, I only could describe like partial. Um, and I was just like, well, he, he, he had a knee brace on. His knee was messed up. Did he have his knee brace on? Because in my mind, I'm still like, my son is, he's okay. So he said, um, there was a knee brace in the apartment, and I'm still like, that's not my son. And he's like, we couldn't ID him because he has no fingerprints, nothing. I said, yeah, he's a good kid. He's only 18. He's in school, so you wouldn't be able to ID right, his fingerprints. Right. Um, so at this point, I'm, 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 I'm breaking down, but I'm still like, I know that's not my son. 
Um, so he said, um, you know, because I only I, I say to myself, I only describe a partial tattoo. So that's not my sign. Um, so he said, um, I'll have a detective call you back in a, in a few hours. Um, so meanwhile, I'm just pacing. And meanwhile, it's only me and my daughter in the house at this time. She's upstairs. I'm downstairs. Mm -hmm. um, and I honestly forgot she was in, even in the house at this point. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just pacing and I'm just like, God, please, whichever way it goes, just let me know where my son is. I mm -hmm. need to know where he is. Um, and I'm just pacing and I'm, in between time, I'm calling his phone and calling his phone. It's ringing and going to the automatic voicemail. Mm. Um, and so I'm still like, God, just please let me know where he is. Cause I'm thinking all these crazy thoughts, is he alive? Or is he being tortured? Cause at this point, I don't know what's happening. Right, right. <sighs> so finally, um, my mind started to come down some and I remembered the tattoos and I called the, the coroner's office back. This was probably maybe about maybe two hours after I, I described my, I, you know, I, I told them who I was again. And at this point, the detective was there. Um, and so um, I was like, yeah, I called earlier. I remember the other tattoo. So he goes, um, well, were you just calling his phone not so long ago? And I said, yeah. And he said, ma'am, I'm sorry to tell you, but mm. I believe this is your son because the phone keeps ringing and keeps saying mom. And at that point, I just, it, I, I can't even describe like that feeling, mm -hmm, you know? Mm -hmm. And I'm just was like, it, it, it was like a, it was like I got ran over by a train, mm. you know? And uh, I just fell on the floor and, and I was just crying, no, no, no. And then um, he was like, are you by yourself? And I said, yeah, he's like, you need to call someone to come over. He was like, I'll call you in a little bit. And I, I, I hung the phone up and I just laid on the floor and um, I was like, I just had to, I knew I had to get the strength because I knew I still had a daughter upstairs. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I got to try to regain my composure mm -hmm. because I need to, she doesn't really know what's happening. Mm -hmm. So I took a breath in and I, I got up and I was like, okay. I called her dad and I said, I need you to come pick her up. Mm -hmm. And I explained to him the situation. Um, so he said, I'm on my way. And I went upstairs and I was like, you know, you're gonna go to daddy's, get dressed and um, get your clothes, I mean, your toys, whatever you wanna take with you. Um, so she was gathering those things up. Um, but meanwhile, I had to call my other son who mm. was away at school and tell him. So I tried to sound, sound as calm as I could. Um, and I just said, I called him and I said, do you have class today? He said, yeah. And I said, do you have to work? He said, yeah. I said, something's happened. I need you to come home. And he's like, mom, what? I said, I'll tell you when you get here. And again, I tried to sound as calm as I could. Um, so probably like an hour later, uh, by this time, someone came over my house to mm. kind of help me out with everything. Um, and about an hour later, um, I called my son back and I said, are you here? Yeah, I said, are you on your way? He goes, mom, he said, I don't know what's happening. He said, but the way you sounded, he said, I just got in my car. I didn't bring my wallet. I didn't bring anything. He said, I'm at King of Prussia. He said, my car is literally almost on E. He said, I'm asking people to help me get gas because I got to get home because something's happened. And he was like, I just got $10, mom. I'm putting gas in the car. I'm almost there. And I could just feel him mm -hmm. through the phone like mm -hmm. he knew. And so when he got home, finally, and I told him to see him break the way he did, it killed me because, you know, when you're a mom, you don't want to see your children hurt and you can't do nothing about it. And I must fix it. Whatever it is, mm -hmm. mommy's going to fix mm -hmm. it. And I couldn't fix it. And um, he said, mom, I knew something happened. He said, because he said, I knew, even though you didn't tell me, he said, I knew if I called your son, he would know what happened and he would tell me. He said, but when he wasn't answering his phone, I knew something happened. Mm. And uh, he just broke. And I, mm. I just, I will never forget that, that image moment. either. Yeah. Yeah. We want to take a quick break. And um, unfortunately, when we come back, we're going to talk about where you are now because that was almost a year ago. Yeah. So we're going to take a real quick and we'll be right back.
and thank you guys so much for keeping it locked here. We are here with Max and Good, and we are here talking about the sign pattern who was gunned down um, a year ago. So I'm not going to go into the circumstances based around what happened because I know there's still some legal legal things going on with mm -hmm. that. But you did share that he was at his sister's house. It was someone that he knew, which is unfortunate that this is a lot of times that what happens, you know, we would think that it would be someone we don't know, but there's a lot of times people we do know. That's gunning down, that's gunning these kids down. But I wanted to ask you something revolved around faith because, um, for me, like when Kiki passed away, and I love the Lord, and this was this year, I was struggling. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna just be honest, you know what I mean? Because um, I, I didn't struggle with death. I struggled with how she died. I struggled with the fact that this girl just left church and was killed a couple hours later. You know what I mean? Like, just like with your son, he loved the Lord. He, he knew God and all of those things, and he's doing everything right. Mm -hmm. But at the same token, he's not here anymore. Mm -hmm. So um, you're in ministry. You're doing all these things. You don't even wait to, to praise Dan that day. How, how did that touch your faith? It, is it still testing your faith now? Because it hasn't even been a year yet. So how did that touch your faith? Um, and you can and, I, and tell people they can be as honest if you don't have, if, even though I know you do, if you didn't have any faith, that's fine. But how did that touch your faith to know that God had called your son home in this way like how did that touch your feet it's funny because um when i say this i i, I it's it shared my testimony and mm -hmm. um you know some people be like wow um so as you had mentioned before i've i started my woman of valor i praise dance i am a true woman of god i hear him speak to me i i, I do what we're supposed to do as christians mm -hmm. um and all my life, the enemy has been after me. Mm -hmm. I knew that when I really started walking in my full God purpose, that he was going to come even stronger. Mm -hmm. I just never seen it this way. Um, I know for a fact, my, God didn't kill my son. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know that. Mm -hmm. um, when it first happened, yes, I did say, God, I don't understand. I did mm -hmm. everything you told me to do. Like, mm -hmm. why, how? Right. I pray for covering over my children every day. How did this happen? Why did this happen? You know, those mm -hmm. are my questions. Mm -hmm. But after a while and I got quiet, God started showing me things and speaking to me and I, and I, I got it, like I understood. You know, God did not kill my Absolutely. son. Absolutely, because he's very much alive. Yes, mm -hmm. we, and, and as we know as Christians, we don't fight against flesh and mm -hmm. blood. We don't. I know the enemy's ploy was, if I do this, this is really gonna stop her purpose. Mm -hmm, this is mm -hmm. really gonna take her down. You know, and um, I knew it was, it was a ploy to get me to just yield from everything God has me to do. Cause my work is not done. Absolutely. And, and the crazy thing is the enemy just doesn't understand. You just ignite it even more. Yeah, and that's, yeah. And I, and I see that with myself, like yeah. the zeal after after Kiki like and because I had just right before Kiki passed away, I had prayed for God to um, open up doors for me to work with more millennials. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is a perfect way because okay. they bury any friends. Um, you know what I mean? They're not living long, so you never know if you're talking to them if this is their last right, moment. Right, right, so right. Um, and then I was praying. Isaiah 61 talks about um, being near to the brokenhearted. Well, being able to understand the broken heart in mm -hmm. this way. I remember when she died, I was like, Lord, I feel like I'm about to die. Mm -hmm. And he said to me, I'm allowing you to feel what she feels, mm -hmm. my friend. Because mm -hmm. I felt like when you talk about running over a train, I, the, the day after, I couldn't move. And I was like, what is, like, I physically mm -hmm. was in pain. And he said, you pray for this. Mm -hmm. So I totally, totally agree with it where um, it, it ignites something in you when you know God. Mm -hmm. Some people, it can take you out, and I get it, and I don't come against it. But when you know him, it's like, I got to get everybody to Jesus. How I do it, Lord? What you want me to do? I got to do this. I got to do mm -hmm. this. So I, I can understand that. Mm -hmm. So I, in, in saying all the time, as Christians, when we talk about us being Christians, we always say, God is good and good all the time. Do you believe that? Even in the midst of all of that, do you believe that God is still a good God? Even I in the do. Midst of that? I good. do. It Again, God did not kill my son. Mm -hmm. We know there's evil walking around. He didn't Absolutely. do that. Absolutely. What I will say, though, is that mm -hmm. my son died instantly. Mm -hmm. When I told, when I asked God, I pray for covering, I don't understand. God said, you pray for covering on this earthly covering, like for nothing to happen, whatever. Mm -hmm. But I covered him. He didn't feel no pain. He died immediately, and I knew where he was. He was like, I still cover him. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So much to the point where a mother's, when their child is dying in your mind, and the enemy tried to use this against, you know, to get me too. I kept saying, you know, 
with someone there to hold him, to soothe him. Mm -hmm. How ironic was it that someone actually that was next door filming, long story short, she wanted to get in the apartment. My son was already going, but she held him. Aww. And I actually got to speak to this person. So it was almost that as was if nice God gave me that person, like, yeah. I need you to know this. Mm -hmm. So it was like, even in this moment that took my heart out, because I loved him that much and, and, and I, I knew, like, this is, this, is, this is not you, God. Like, he showed me his grace and mercy, his covering mm. and everything. So again, and, and I know where my son is. Like I said, the enemy threw it. He had me, but my son was saved. I know where he is, and I get signs all the time saying, my son, is, I, I know where he is. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give to someone who's lost a child, but they're struggling to believe that God even exists now because of the fact that they, their child is gone, in, right. in, in that sense? I always say, when you lose a child, to me, if you're a Christian and you just come to me and start quoting me Bible scriptures, that's not gonna mm -hmm. get me. I gotta see someone that has lived yeah. what I've been through. And then when I see what they're doing, I'm like, well, what, what is it? What is that that's working for that person? You know, I wanna follow this person step by step. That's gonna be like, hmm, maybe I need to try what that person is doing. I've had so many people inbox me about how much encouragement I've given mm -hmm. them, how, you know, I brought them back to God and different stuff like that. Just from watching me on mm -hmm. social media, I was in the store, I swear to you, a couple days ago mm -hmm. in a family dollar. And this one young lady, she came up to me and she said, um, she said, can I ask you something? I said, sure. And I'm thinking she's gonna ask about the dress mm -hmm. I had on my mm -hmm. hair or something. And she goes, um, you know, your son was killed, right, last year? And I was just like, you know, it, it shocked me. And I was like, yeah. And she said, I just wanted to let you know, you are such an encourager. She said, I just want to let you know, people are watching you. She was like, I follow you on social media. And when she said that, I was just like, okay, God, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. It's definitely, yeah. it's working. Yeah. So, so last question, well, two last questions I, I want to ask you, but most importantly, the milestones are coming up. So you're coming up. Mm -hmm. um, how are you getting through the days, through the birthdays, right. through the holidays? Ooh. Yeah. Um, Thanksgiving's coming in a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. um, it's like a month away. So how has that been for you with the milestones? I don't know how I'm going to be. I, I can't call it, you know, um, but I know that it's not, it's not as exciting as it was right. for me and it's not going to be, yeah. even Christmas again. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, I had my moments. Mm -hmm. um, I know I'm not gonna to wanna to be around people, I will say that. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. I would definitely say that. Um, it comes in strides, like. It does. Um, Kiki's birthday was September 20th, and it's funny, you remember everything about a person when they gone, which is sad. And I recorded that day, and even now I'm like, do I chuck that show? I was off. Yeah, yeah. I cried all the way here on the bus. I didn't even realize that I was such in that emotional state until I realized, yo, this was supposed to be my 24th birthday and I'm seeing that everybody posting and we excited. And I couldn't keep myself together. Like I cried the whole time. I, I couldn't even really formulate my questions here. My mind was all over, but it comes in strides where I was good for a while. But then again, now when the milestone comes, you gotta realize like it it's does. a wrap. It yeah. Does. So I definitely it understand it. So I'll actually, we're gonna take a quick break. I'm going to ask you one last question before we end out the show, but we're going to take a quick break. And I want everybody to uh, take a look at that shirt as well. So <laughs> we'll be right back. And thank you guys so much for keeping it locked here. We are at the end of the show, um, but not the end of this journey. So much more for Max and to do in, in regards to her son and her family um, and her bloodline. No matter what God, you know, he chooses who he chooses in order to get what he needs from us. So I definitely understood that. I want to ask you this last question, forgiveness. Where are you at with that word? Because that's, that's hard. You mm -hmm. know, this is, you know, his sister. You know, I take it as we're supposed to protect our siblings. And I'm not blaming anybody, but that's a, a hard place to get to. Mm -hmm. I, I'm going to be honest. I don't know why I am with it. Mm -hmm. uh, Lord, forgive me. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But um, where are you at with that word? If you are anywhere, are you at the end? Of, you might be in the beginning, like at the four. You might right. got to get through the right. rest of the word, you know? <laughs> but um, where are you at with that word? You know what's funny? When everything first happened, I was like, I don't want to talk to her. She can't tell me nothing. I'm still kind of there. Um... 
I just say, I pray for God to work on me. Okay. With both. Um, the person that did it, I, 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 he probably doesn't even know why he did it. I know that per he doesn't. Um, and I, I question, like, can I forgive him? Because I feel like it, it, it wasn't you. I know what it was, mm -hmm. per se. What was willing it. Mm -hmm. Right. So, again, I just, because the trial will be coming up soon. Yeah. Um, and I just pray God. That's why I asked you, because you yeah. got to see this person now. Yeah, That's going to yeah, yeah. be a really emotional. Yeah, yeah. So I'll be praying. Yeah. If you need me to come down there, I definitely will. Okay. Um, so I'll be praying for you and, and myself to get through the entire word. I think I'm halfway. I think I'm halfway. And I'm not I'm not angry anymore. Right. That's good. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But, you know, and mm -hmm. it, it is what it is. It, it, sometimes it's a process to forgive, but right. it's a lot right, of things right. that God has called us to do what we have to. Mm -hmm. And it has nothing to do with them. So... If somebody wanted to keep in contact with you and want to know more about the foundation that you started and, and, and um, love and memory of your son, where can yes. they go? <laughs> um, well, it's the organization is called Jaw World, um, and that's J A H W O R L D eighteen dot O R G. Mm -hmm. um, they can go on that site um, and actually, <clears throat> it's a it's a it tells about the foundation. Okay. It talks about Jaw Son. You can. Um, uh, it even has an email if you want to email with additional okay. questions. Um, also, they can always um, reach out um, to me as well mm -hmm. um, on my Woman of Valor okay. as well, which is uh, on Instagram as Woman of Valor 74. Right. That's how I, that's actually how I, yeah, yeah. I think Nishanda put you up and I went and I was like, oh, really? And I read your story yeah. and I contacted you. So she will definitely get back to you. She is definitely open to coming out and sharing her story because so yeah. many kids mm -hmm. need to hear this because Absolutely. this is what your actions do. You know, yes, I, again, yes, like yes. I'm sure he doesn't know why he did it. And he's probably sitting in one to to this day exactly. and his life is over. Exactly. So if you're struggling in your faith. If you've never received him as your Lord and Savior, you can simply say, Lord, I am a sinner. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Forgive me for the unforgiveness. And I ask you that you will help me to work through it. I thank you for Maxine's story, for her, uh, for Jai's son's story. Mm -hmm. And I ask that you would help me to put um, purpose into the pain that you've allowed me to suffer in order to know you. And it's just that simple. Um, he's interceding right now for you to get to this place. Jesus is sitting right in next to the Father. And he prayed for you to get to this place. He's prayed for her to get to yes. this place and me as well. Yes. And we all have our own journeys, but understanding he's walking us out with you. If you want to keep up with me, you can go to Zarina Lomax on Facebook. That is just simply my name. Um, and Zarina Lomax 33 on Instagram. Absolutely. Please keep up with her Absolutely. story. Support her foundation. Support her ministry. Yes. So you can sew yes. into both our ministries because yes. it takes it takes finances to do these things. And it's not for her, but to be able to go forth and to make sure that this doesn't happen to another family. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I appreciate you so much for coming here today. Mm -hmm. I look forward to be able to honor him yeah. and remembering him. There's some mm -hmm. ideas that I have just looking at him <laughs> um, fashion wise that I think will be really, really dope for him. Yeah. So I look forward to that. So I appreciate I'll we praying for you, sis. Thank you. Definitely Thanks be praying for, for you. The yeah, milestones yeah. is coming up. The trial is coming up. Yes. So yes. I'll definitely be praying. Can you can you pray us out? Oh, sure. Okay. Sure, sure. Mm. Father God, we come to you humbly today, Lord. We just thank you so much for this day. Um, we thank you so much for allowing this platform, Father God, to um, give you the glory, to allow people to see you, Father God, even in the most troubling time, in the most painful time, in the most hurting time, Father God. We just thank you for just showing your, your mercy and your grace in everything, Father God. And, and we thank you so much for just allowing us to know that no matter what, you're always around, mm -hmm. you're always by our side, you're always here guiding us and walking with us, Father God. But for we, we just want you to open up the hearts of those that have closed them to you, Father God, because you are the only one that can heal those hearts, Father God. You are the only one that can um, give the insight that, that people need to, to be, to forgive mm -hmm. and to, to press forward past the hurt and past the bitterness and anger, Father God. All they have to do is open their hearts to you, Father God. So we pray that you just touch those people, that you touch their minds, touch their spirits and touch their, their hearts, Father God. And um, um, I ask a special prayer for Zarina, Father God, for you to continue to work on her, for you to continue to give it a platform um, that let your name be glorified, Father God. Um, and we just thank you for this day. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. And thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be back next week.